What's happening, gang? I'm Joe. And I'm Chad. What are we working on today, Chad? Well, today we're going to talk about how we insulated our ceiling and what we're going to do to prevent the moisture that everybody is so scared of in their steel buildings, their pole barns, and their garages. How we're going to stop that from happening so we never have to worry about it. Also, if you're into cars, hot rods, classic cars, fun projects, tomfoolery, yeah, fun stuff like that. You're probably here for more of the insulation stuff in the garage, but if you're into that, be sure to subscribe to our channel because we have, once this garage is done, we have a lot of builds coming up and we'll probably actually start on some builds in Joe's garage, even before this garage is done because we've got a few, quite a few projects laying around that need to be played with. Done. Yeah. <laughs> had to remove all the junk and debris that was stored up above when we had to make sure there was no screws and nails sticking down to where when we install our metal, we don't have to worry about anything being in the way. Oh, that one's ugly! <laughs> so what we did, we got everything down. That was probably a million dollar painting right there. Destroyed. No! What does that make you feel? I feel energy <laughs> pulling in, like, you know? What do you see when you're looking at that? Time lost and energy spent. <laughs> <laughs> Picasso! <laughs> so in this corner over here, we had no contact point. Same with the corner at the under, other end of the garage. So we had to install a two by four at each end. So we had a place to screw up the metal on each end. We had to do that in all four corners because there wasn't one there because we installed three inch insulation that stuck out past where a contact point would be for our ceiling. Then what we had to do was measure our trusses. And they happened to be four foot on center. So instead of going and get eight foot exactly cut sheet metal, we went and got it customized and cut eight foot two inches from our local Amish. Go find the Amish, they'll set you up right. Yes, the Amish will hook you up. We cut it eight foot two inches so we had a little bit of an overlap so we're able to slide the metal underneath it to give it a better look so we're not just buttoning it up. Having a four foot span between where we're sc our screw points for our sheet metal is okay with a rigid metal that we're using. If you have an eight foot span, like a lot of people do, you're probably not gonna wanna do this without putting some sort of, uh, what do you call it, a purlin or a... Extra support of some kind, just more bracing. Why do we decide to use this bubble foil wrap as opposed to you know a foam or a, a spray foam or a board or however, or even batting? A lot of people use just plastic, straight up plastic, but... Free ours. Yes. for. 12 R's, it's got bubble in between it, very good insulation, very good vapor barrier, it is just good stuff. Use this. And they didn't even pay us to say that. Totally not even affiliated with these guys. I don't even know who made this one. I don't know, the Amish made it. The Amish made it. They made it out of corn and wheat and rye. <laughs> Hemp. Just throw it on the floor, Joe. It's a 96% radiant heat resistor, so that means 96% of the heat that hits is gonna be bounced off, and it's 100% vapor barrier if it's taped correctly, which we took our time, we used tons and tons of tape, and uh, we got everything sitting to where it's, it's nice and tight. Well, the Amish actually told me to use this stuff because they build a lot of steel sided buildings, steel roofs and stuff, and they said this is key to keeping your heat inside your building. Point the foil to where you want the heat to stay in and bounce off of. So if you're down in the south and you're trying to keep most of your heat out of your garage, you are going to want to point the foil outward so the radiant heat will deflect off it and stay outside. This foil also has an R12 rating when hung, so that's actually really good for the amount of thickness that it is. Uh, you get a lot of bang for your buck. It's easy to work with relatively and uh, it's cheap. Yeah, all, all you do is you pretty much two people, a couple ladders if you don't have any scaffolding, and we use what, T50 staples? We did. Stapled it up. Pretty simple, no brainer. The only thing Joe screwed up on Ooh. was instead of <laughs> overlapping, we should have overlapped our bubble foil instead of trying to butt it up. Neither of us actually thought of this until we were completely done while we were taping it. We were like, why didn't we just overlap it a couple inches? It wouldn't have hurt nothing. It would have been a much better install. So be sure to overlap it and don't just butt it up. And then you won't get these big bubbles or humps in it either. Yes, you can pull it straight and be done with it. Why does moisture occur? It's because cold is meaning hot, hot meaning cold. Uh, 
on a, on a metal surface typically or any hard surface that's able to hold on to the cold a lot longer. Uh, that's what insulation is supposed to prevent. In some cases it doesn't, but this is why it's going to work so well. It's because we've got a vapor barrier barrier here that's going to keep the air away and the cold away. The more insulation you have in your ceiling, the better vapor barrier that you have in your ceiling, the more you want to keep all your heat you're creating inside your room. You want to keep all that heat inside your room. And if it does escape, which it will, very little, if, even if you have it insulated and sealed really well, but it's not going to create no problems. When you have a lot of heat escaping to heat up above the insulation and then it's cold outside, like Joe said, that is where the hot meets the cold. That's where you're going to start getting moisture. And stagnant air also creates an uh, opportunity for moisture to accumulate. Luckily, we got a nice drafty ceiling actually here, which is what you want in your ceiling is air moving through it so the moisture doesn't have as much of a chance to accumulate. Yes, so right now we got a few holes opened up in our ceiling right now for when we blow in our insulation. If you look above our wood stove here, our wood stove will be taken out, but right up in here. If you were to stick your hand up there, there is a breeze like no other blowing right through there. If you go to this other end, stick your hand up through there, there is a big time breeze. It is very, very well vented. Ventilation on the cold part of your attic space, whether it's in your house or in your garage, the cold part, the, it needs to have ventilation. It allows air to move in there and it doesn't allow moisture to form pretty Condense. much. Condense. Whatever Joe said, condense. <laughs> We've got some big, huge gaping gaps wherever Joe touched. We're going to use this uh, industrial grade tape that's for insulation stuff, taping your seams and all that. What, 12 degrees outside right now? Right. Something like that. And our heat is escaping through these big gaping holes that Joe left in here. It looks safe. It's I'm sure very you're fine. safe. Yeah. Tut, you're always in the way no matter where I put you. So after installing all the bubble foil and taping all the seams very good so you have no air leaks anywhere. We then brought our metal in and started installing that. The trick is on the first piece of metal, be sure to get that measured out just right because if you're crooked at all, by the time you get to the other end, you're gonna be way off. So off you wanna be foot. straight. And we started in the corner some people will start in the center, depending, but we have a flat ceiling, so we are starting in the corner. And then also, you'll want to start on with this edge facing your wall. There's sort of two sides to corrugated metal. This is sort of an overlapping one, and you're going to want that to, to overlap with your next piece and have this nice straight piece on this edge so that it all clicks in nicely. And as we mentioned earlier, we did a two inch overlap, and that really helped with the installation actually because we were able to to slide the next piece under the first one so we're able to line everything up better, have a kind of an extra hand there so you didn't always have to be holding it up. So that really helped with the install. So I'd highly recommend that if you're doing this, you know, with yourself or just a buddy. Yeah, because even when I was on one end trying to maneuver the drill and getting the screws started, it was really nice to have that piece of metal held up by the other piece of metal to help you get everything started and lined up. So when we got to the electrical, we used a three quarter inch hole saw bit to drill the hole through and we used a compression connector slide through the metal because you do not want to pull your wiring through just the sheet metal because that could cut the wire coating and create an issue, a fire or... A nice a, weld up there. Yeah, a nice weld, electrocution <laughs> or whatnot and your lights will be not working too awful good. And these aren't our permanent lights or anything, so we pulled down extra wiring through the whole thing. So we wanted to have enough there to work with afterwards because we want to be getting more than just a single bulb with these things. The trim, you notice we did not install trim up above. I totally dropped the ball on that and totally forgot about the trim. So I, we left a little bit of space, not much, but we do have trim now that we will be installing before we put the sheet metal up on the walls. So when we slide the wall metal up, when it butts up against the metal on the roof, we're not going to have a big gap to where you can see pink between it. We'll have some nice pretty trim there, so it'll look nice and professional as we are. Or, not, or if not, we'll just spray paint it and you'll never know anyways. Definitely not. <laughs>
Now that we have the bubble foil stapled to the rafters and the sheet metal screwed on top of that, now it can hold the weight of the insulation we are going to put up above. And what are we using up above, Joe? We're using blow-in cellulose, recycled paper, and it, it runs about 14 bucks a bag for it up here. We need to get about 62 bags. That'll give us about an, uh, 10 inches of actual material up there. And it's gonna give about an R38 rating. But with the added R12, the vapor barrier, all that good stuff, it'll give us to 50, but a nice base to keep all of our heat in. And if it's not enough, we can always add more down the road, but it should be plenty for what we're doing out here. Yes, yeah, so if we notice the snow and ice buildup melting off the roof in the winter time, which it is right now, then that means our heat's escaping and we need to add more insulation. But we don't really think that's gonna be the issue, especially with the vapor barrier, radiant barrier that we have here, giving us our extra 12 R value. The cost of the blow-in cellulose that we're getting is about $14 a bag. And to do about 1,200 square foot at 10.5 inches, I believe it's right around 62 bags that we'll need. And at $14 a bag, it is roughly $885. $885. So figure about $1,000 for 1,200 square foot because I'll probably get a little extra like I do everything else. <laughs> and we should be good to go. And you notice around the edges, we kind of got some gaps yet, but that's just where we got to run some electrical for one more thing. We're getting radiant heat put in here and we'll be able to blow in the cellulose around any region around here if, if they're hard to get to or anything like that. If you notice in the video, there's two by fours coming down that went to these garage door tracks. We completely eliminated those. We marked on our steel uh, ceiling sheet metal up there where the studs are. What we're gonna do is take an angle iron and screw that right to the studs right to there, makes a cleaner look. We don't have a hole going through there and no more two by four hanging down. Stay tuned as we finish our walls. We got our walls to do. We have flooring. You're probably wondering what, what we have on? on our flooring. Where'd we get it? How much it cost? And is it gonna start on fire? Can you like drive on it? Can you put a jack on it? Can you put a jack stand on it? Can you weld on it? Can you cut and torches on it? Can you dance on it? Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.